this environmental series current affairs uh, which is important for preliminary examination that we have been doing uh, with this slide and I am Sivaraj Rajendran and with that information we will start this video. So for example see this uh, these three uh, important species or these three important species were added in UN convention on migratory species. So, or uh, this UN convention you have to know, UN convention on migratory species. This actually, for example, last year my friend, he was in uh, Indian Forest Service. So, he had been in training and they were taken to this place. So, if you clear Indian, Indian Forest Service, you will also be taken to this place. The, or the, you will be taken all over India and you will be asked to attend all these conventions so that you get to understand the environmental meaning of all these things. But uh, this happened last year, so I remember him calling from Gujarat, so Gandhi Nagar, I remember him calling and he was seeing all these things happening on the field. So if you become an officer, I wish you become and you see all these things. So but uh, coming to the preliminary portion of it, so these three species were added to this UN Convention on Migratory Species. What is this UN Convention on Migratory Species is this Bone Convention. So you have to remember the other things. So Vienna Convention for uh, CFC or Ozone Layer if you remember and then this Bone Convention you have to remember for uh, the migratory UN Convention on Migratory Species and there was a Basel Convention if you remember the previous videos Basel Convention for Transboundary Movement of Hazardous Material this you have to know then you have to know the three things because see this Asian Elephant already we saw a previous video what was that now Asian Elephant is uh, uh, being added to this Convention on Migratory Species and uh, what does that mean means in the sense that Asian Elephants are moving to other countries as well so why we, we have a convention like this means some species move across borders so what is this Indian elephant and see this see this is why I keep uh, insisting on you please reading this wildlife protection act see every or uh, every important thing in environment will be connected to this act so please look at that but uh, elephant uh, first we will see elephant and it has been added to this uh, uh, convention and uh, see this uh, there are subpopulation in so see so as I told you uh, only so when UPSC asks only uh, one horned rhinoceros they will ask this one horned rhinoceros last time they asked this one horned rhino or uh, gir or in gir asiatic lion so a question like this was asked so as I told in the previous video in one horned rhinoceros is present across Bhutan, Nepal also not only in India but this Asiatic lion my friends is only in Gir, Gir National Park in Gujarat. Please check that. It's very important information. Uh, it is the pride of India Asiatic lion. So, so elephant is added to this convention. The next important thing which is added to this convention is this great Indian bustard. This is also very key. Please watch this. Uh, because the information why I gathered is related to this great Indian bustard and it is critically endangered. Uh, elephant is not critically endangered my friends actually elephant is endangered not critically endangered but uh, here great Indian bustard is critically endangered that is it is at the verge of extinction. So but uh, see this uh, it is in the India Pakistan so first is this then this it is around the India Pakistan it is actually in the Rajasthan area. Uh, and uh, this was asked uh, many times and because of this power line collisions so the reason why they are getting uh, affected is that because of this power line collisions and the in current affairs is related to that uh, and this uh, see bone convention what is bone convention you have to see this this is bone convention convention on migratory species of animals this has been transboundary conservation of animals you have to know this bone convention means they will give only bone convention you have to know it is migratory species of wild animals okay then see this critically endangered uh, and the third third which is added is Bengal florican see uh, remember this Asiatic lion great Indian bustard great Indian bustard is in Rajasthan uh, Bengal florican see Bengal it's a Bengal florican it is in Bengal 
so in the sense that it is also critically endangered so this is bengal florican and it is also critically endangered and hence it is used in the uh, transboundary so it is also moving in bengal so it must be moving towards uh, bangladesh or something so that is why they have used it in uh, transboundary thing why i kept this is that see i kept this because in uh, ministry of environment and forest has introduced this fire bird diverter so as i told you uh, great indian bustard gets affected because of these high voltage transmission line see this uh, because of these transmission lines and you can see the picture here uh, it gets affected this is the great indian bustard and it gets affected and they have uh, this uh, thing but uh, reading like this will not give you any mark see uh, prelims you have to know the background so they will ask you great indian bustard and what it is so this is the information and the next is this see sokar wetland complex see it's a 42nd uh, it happened in see this december 2020 and the environment minister at that time had tweeted about this so 42nd uh, but uh, one of my student sent me so when i uh, was talking to him he sent me there uh, uh, there are other ramsar sites that uh, which have been added after this but i am i am not sure please you can check it but uh, i feel this is important in current affairs if there is um, uh, other things which are added please check and you can uh, put it in the comment also but this is important i feel this is important it's a 42nd ramsar site uh, the environment minister has uh, tweeted about it they will ask you like this what upsc will ask you no they will ask the place uh, they will ask the place and the ramsar site they will ask you to uh, actually match it so they will if they give in the sense that they give you so car they give you so car and uh, they will give you uttarakhand so they will say that it is in uttarakhand but uh, see this it is in ladakh so this is how you have to know so uh, but see this is the thing and uh, the, the so car lake has two uh, two lakes joining them uh, this you have to know two lakes joining them one is a fresh water lake one is a saline lake see these kinds of uh, details if you know it is actually uh, well and good only so uh and uh, so in this uh, we have to see what is this bird life international and ramsar list uh, so developing and uh, maintaining the international network of wetlands ramsar convention if you remember 1972 in the list i showed you after the world uh, environmental convention which happened in 1972 uh, in june after that ramsar site uh, ramsar convention happened so if you happen to see we will see this ramsar convention but before that this bird life what is this bird life so in this so car birds are coming so bird life uh, international is creating something uh, so bird life international is an ngo see this is the point uh, uh, what upsc will do you know they will mix and match government institution un institution and these ngos they will say an ngo is a government institution government institution is an ngo so we have to be very careful in uh, having a clear path so ramsar site is for international protection of these uh, international network of uh, wetlands but bird life international it is a lo see it is local to global outreach program where it is used uh, or local people are involved in uh, protection of all these birds and uh, the ngo is important uh, so the next point see this is the point so non governmental organization involved in the conservation of birds and their habitats see uh, this was created it's an international ngo international ngo and you can use this information in your paper 2 gs paper 2 mains because there is a concept called as ngos self help groups there is a topic in that ngos how you have to read means you have to know indian as well as international both you have to know uh while writing answer only india if you write ngos in india the answer might not give you a complete picture but if you are able to uh, see when you are reading something for prelims why not introduce that into the mains which you are writing so ngos when you are writing in prelims the mains you write this uh, international ngo which is bird life international you will uh, actually uh, uh, remember this as well so next is this see uh, wetlands convention this is what i wanted to say wetlands convention city of uh, ramsar it was in 1971 came into 19 but uh, the point why i uh, kept this was uh, you know what upsc asked upsc said uh, wetland or this ramsar convention this ramsar convention only works in international arena 
that is they they work uh, so we will assume that see when uh, there is an international convention we will immediately assume that yes it is working on a larger scale okay this was the statement given but to see this the convention's mission please look at the convention's mission it is use of all wetlands sorry uh, conservation and wise use of uh, conservation so this is important and then uh, i will tell you two questions yes two questions one they said that it works in the international level but see look at this they work through local national international that is they are working with all round contribution and for the improvement of the wetland this is first question okay second question you know one more question how they asked they said ramsar site see ramsar site cannot be or uh, uh, cannot be used at all see it cannot be destroyed okay wetlands cannot be destroyed but uh, the mission of ramsar convention is to have conservation and wise use this word is important that is uh, uh, correct use pannu see ishtadhu use panni destroy panna kodadhu that is the point la you read that that is the mission statement but upsc will give cannot be used at all or uh, or ramsar convention says wetland should not be used at all but uh, wise use second point local national international cooperation upsc gave the question upsc gave was international cooperation now third point third question sorry third question what na see we will uh, uh, so in the sense that what is the definition of wetlands given in ramsar convention so ramsar convention la what is the definition mean see this they are this everyone knows so see what is a wetland means any area which is submerged with water so we will assume yes true it see lake river aquifer swamps swamps is uh, like uh, this uh, marshy area see this marshy area uh, wetland grassland peat lands uh, oases estuaries deltas tidal flats all these we will assume you know we will assume that uh, this is uh, uh, true only but uh, see this they also include human made sites idha point they also include human made uh, sites rice paddy see rice paddy adavad rice paddy will have this water reservoir la it is actually submerged in water everyone would have said seen rice plantation so it would be in a submerged they are if that they, if see in the sense that not all rice paddy areas if the the point what they are saying is that if there is an important rice paddy area or fish pond area as wetland as important na they will protect that as well salt pans see the salt pans fish ponds idella man made human sites these are all human made sites uh, lakes rivers and all etc so three questions are there in this so look at ramsar convention holistically okay when they ask the question holistically so this is see this the this is the point so they this is a global network of uh, partners uh, international national non governmental see they are, they work with see uh, the point uh, what upsc will say is that they work only on the international level but uh, if you see they are working with all partners you know see whatever partners are there for protection of a wetland you have to work with them and you have to make use of them so that is what up sorry uh, ramsar convention is doing next i think this uh, topic we saw in the previous uh, video itself so next we will go here uh, karakal this is in current affairs see this march 2021 march 2021 this karakal has been uh, declared as critically endangered see this is what critically endangered en endangered and vulnerable so there are uh, there are many categories so iucn okay international union for see uh, this i think this slide i have not kept but uh, please uh, you it is your as we said as i said the time is very less now you have to work with me so please in the wikipedia check what is this international union for conservation so again i will repeat international union for conservation of nature red list uh, you see you check in wikipedia what is the meaning of this so what is iucn what is red list uh, see under this uh, the animals have been declared critically endangered endangered vulnerable many other things so what uh, in india have we, we have done is this uh, karakal has been declared as endangered what is this karakal we have to know and before that you have to know it is declared by wild, wild national board for wildlife 
i will give you and see uh, now yes now you have to work so now you see this national board for wildlife you know under this this is a statutory body please check this statutory body means it has a law see what is the meaning of statutory statutory body means i cannot create something without or uh, without any backing if there is a law backing that organization it's called a statutory organization upsc will say national board for wildlife is not statutory but it is you know where this uh, board is it is wild life protection act so wildlife protection see i keep insisting wildlife protection act 1972 why i keep uh, uh, insisting for you to read this wildlife protection act is that because it has everything national park wildlife sanctuary creation uh, conservation reserve national board for wildlife uh, and uh, zoo authority of india five i have said zoo authority of central zoo authority of india uh, there is a wandalur zoo or many other zoos are there right under what authority they are functioning they are functioning under wildlife protection act national board for wildlife so i have said this now it is your duty to check two things so i will ask you to check you please check this you, uh, you can actually put that in, in the answer as well it will be a nice uh, national board for so two questions i will give you put the answer for this because uh, it's an important question national board for wildlife yes this will be good because i uh, i even i cannot gather everything and tell you national board for wildlife national tiger conservation authority national tiger conservation authority okay so you uh, you please check this too you check this too who is the head who is the head of these two organization this is very very important my friends you please check it uh, who is the head of these two organization and you put that uh, in the answer now coming back to this karakal uh, karakal uh, so see this uh, they have been uh, given as critically endangered so what you have to know is that immediately you should know whether karakal is present in any other uh, place yes see yes yes see across africa see yes see uh, in, the, in one not only in india other than the karakal is not only in india Ka only in india is asiatic lion only in india is asiatic lion no uh, one horned rhinoceros or no karakal karakal is also uh, it uh, flourishes in other parts of the world as well see next is this uh, second point you should know or third point you should know uh, where which geographical location it is in arid and semi arid scrub forest arid and semi arid if you see the map of india if you see the map of india this area is what the arid and semi arid this is the part this because see southwest monsoon comes here southwest monsoon hits here first so this area receives the rain last okay that is why it is having less than 75 cm of rainfall and that is why here wheat is grown less than 100 cm of rainfall that is why this area grows wheat that is why this area is called arid and sub arid uh, scrub so when you are reading this you have to read geography when you are reading geography you have to connect it with here so see this the presence of it is presence is restricted to this part see simple uh, and if you remember the one horned rhinoceros it is present in savanna grassland we saw in the previous video check that so karakal is in arid semi arid what is arid semi arid check it next is this ah uh, next is this important uh, not say, okay so it was in current affairs so what why why i took is that uh, current affairs forest fire report so who in india gives this forest fire report so you you have to know who in india gives this forest fire report forest fire report is given by forest survey of india it's a simple thing so you if you become an ifs officer you will be taken taken for training there forest survey of india what is that please check that for so this was in current affairs they had released this forest fire report and hence i have included that but uh, another important see for forest when we are reading forest survey for another important fact is that they are the person who actually map the forest cover of india that is a forest if you if you have seen forest survey they keep re releasing forest survey forest survey so the name itself is there right forest survey of india 
and the first assessment was released in 1987 first okay first two was released in 1987 and uh, the last one see this 16 uh, I am not sure whether they have because 2021 uh, and 2020 many of the census and many of the things have been government works have been delayed because of COVID. Uh, I do not know whether the full report has uh, come or the 17th report have come but 16th report has come. 16th report of Forest Survey of India has come and uh, wh what I have included is that see uh, how they are surveying, how they are surveying, they are surveying through resource sat. What is this resource sat? This resource sat is remote sensing satellite. See this resource sat, name itself it is there, resource sat. There are two satellites. One is this earth observing uh, earth uh, observation satellite and the other is this communication satellite. This is geostationary satellite. This is remote sensing satellite. These two are different. One one day for observation of earth. Okay, huh? They will observe. They will observe from they will be in the low earth orbit. See, this will be in the low earth orbit. Correct? Huh? This will be in the geostationary higher orbit. Communication satellite. The communication has to go and come. But earth observation satellite will be in the lower order. So it has to, so for example, resource sat, uh, resource sat will be in the lower earth orbit, 400 kilometers. See, either the UPAC will ask you, either the on the difference our resource sat, you see, resource again, uh, see, don't get panicked. Resource sat, they will not ask specific. What question they asked, you know, they asked what is the work of remote sensing satellite. This is what they are simple, they asked what remote sensing satellite does what this uh, earth observation geostationary difference simple one word they ask so in the forest survey how we are observing we are observing through remote sensing right so see this this is the current affair so in the sense that they have given largest sir, there are two questions here see this largest forest cover madhya pradesh largest forest cover second arunachal pradesh third chhattisgarh fourth odisha fifth maharashtra and this is percentage of total cover correct huh? percentage of total cover na forest cover by total area so this is the percentage that is uh, how much percentage in your state forest is covered not the highest number okay but anna upsc strangely asked this question in 2020 this question was there please check it okay huh? uh, uh, they are uh, they have asked this based on this report i guess but they gave, see, what they gave is that they said that higher, high forest, high forest coverage, that is area by area, sorry, uh, forest cover by area. So they asked for proportion and they said high to low, map high to low. And the options they gave was Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, uh, Odisha and uh, Chhattisgarh. See, they are uh, Madhya Pradesh, I will repeat Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha and Chhattisgarh. They said which of the following state has the highest forest cover percentage. You have to map it or you have to arrange it from the highest to the lowest. But in this report you see this, they are giving the forest cover percentage as highest for Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Meghalaya, Manipur and Nagaland. But uh, the above number gives Madhya Pradesh is the largest number, Arunachal Pradesh is the uh, largest number, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Maharashtra. But uh, you know the answer in this, if you see, see, this is where you use logic. This is where you see anything, see, even if you read uh, all these things, you have to go inside the hall and use your logic, uh, my friends, because see, directly UPC will not ask. See, this, this, we have the uh, highest forest cover. But we have to apply our logic. Chhattisgarh definitely is the place where less uh, urbanization has, sorry, less industrialization has happened. Many of the areas are still covered with forest, but not in the case of Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh can have the highest forest cover, but it is a industry, lie slightly or overtaken industrial, uh, industrial wise. And also, uh, if you see a little urbanized more than Chhattisgarh. So first will be Chhattisgarh. So next will be Odisha. Next will be Madhya Pradesh. Next will be Maharashtra. You can check the 2020 answer. This is the answer. 
okay this is the 20, 2020 question you have to arrange like this so it will be ordered like this so if you happen to see why i gave Maha, madhya pradesh Mahar, you can say madhya pradesh or maharashtra how did you decide means madhya pradesh uh, Maharashtra is the most urbanized among the all three and hence if you see yes see Maharashtra can have a forest cover but it is urbanized right so percentage see this formula you have to approach this formula you cannot see that is what I am saying UPSC will not give directly this is a logic you have to apply my friends logic okay then this one then vikas yojana what is this one then vikas yojana means one then vikas means one means forest hindi uh, in, in hindi uh, one means forest dan means uh, money or uh, wealth uh, money or wealth so forest wealth vikas means uh, development vikas means development so in hindi it, it means these three things so forest wealth development so for forest wealth development, you are creating one done forest wealth kendra centers. Kendra means center. Kendri Vidyalaya, central school. That is why it is called Kendra Vidyalaya, center. Uh, so uh, Kendra, Kendra Sarkar. Kendra Sarkar means central, sir, central government. Okay? Kendra means center. Kendra means center. One done Kendra. So uh, forest wealth development through one then kendra so you are taking the uh, development or the wealth of forest and using them for uh, using them in this center by improving the uh, or sorry uh, the marketing of all these products so you are uh, who does this trifed so trifed is doing so trifed has launched this because see uh, Sankal says Siddhi so they have launched this uh, digital connective see that is what I am saying digital connect so uh, like for see like Amazon somebody has to do for uh, see like Amazon products uh, have to be taken from one place to another some digital marketing tool has to be in the center so that the product gets accessed by others or consumers so in the this one then Kendra or the wealth of the forest have to be have some uh, digital platform so that digital platform is provided by this trifed and then this is uh, being uh, sold and uh, see this trifed see trifed plus another another scheme trifed plus ministry of food processing and industry have uh, given rise to tri food okay or tri food so they are they are having same uh, the words they have mixed tri food they are making as tri food uh, and this is see I do not know whether this question will come but this was in current affairs I have given this why I will tell you this see but uh, remove uh, have this world air quality report so the base because many reports are there in the current affairs world air quality report what is this world air quality report means it is showing as India is a really unhealthy place to live see this area uh, and China also because these two areas is where the air quality index and Delhi you might be very aware Delhi uh, at the time of January, February and all, it is not very hard to breathe itself. So it is like uh, this toxic cha chamber of gas. Uh, so the, the, this report says that only. But why I uh, do not know whether this world air quality report, because world air quality report, we will assume that some international organization has, uh, uh, has done this report. But it is done by this uh, IQAR. So air and it is a private enterprise. See, uh, it's a private enterprise in Switzerland. So I do not know whether this will come, but anyways, have a, have a look at it. Uh, World Air Quality Report is done by this IQA. So thank you for watching this video. And anyone who has not liked it, please do like it, share it, subscribe it, and uh, all the best for your preliminary examination. Thank you.